Hello again slot racers, welcome to another Cleave Tech Tech Tip video. If you haven't seen the first three parts then have a look in the description of this video for a link to the first three parts but we're now on to the fourth stage of building our JK C43 chassis. This is something that most people think is a very simple task but when I actually put my mind to it there's actually a lot to think about here and I'll be going through a lot of the different things and a lot of different decisions you have to make before you do this next step. So we're going to install the rear axle bushes into our chassis today. Now these are from somewhere i'm not entirely sure who i bought these from originally but there's plenty out there that have the same design now you can see they've got a little groove around them now that groove is quite handy because it allows us to put it into put them into our chassis and we can move them around and slide them around within our chassis so we can align them correctly within the chassis without having to grind out the pillar blocks on our chassis so there are other ones that you can get that don't have a groove but they're just machined down so they are a very small diameter you could even get ones that are eccentric so that when you turn them round, the hole is not necessarily in the middle of the bushing um, you can get them from lots of different sources i think mid america do them jk do them um, you can get them from all your probably your local track or your local distributor. So one of the first things you've got to consider when doing this job is what are your rules that you're gonna to race to at your track or your organization? Well, some rules might have a ground clearance at the back. So that's measured generally under the chassis at the back. Sometimes it's measured under the gear. So if you imagine your gear is sitting there, then sometimes it's measured actually under the gear itself or under the chassis um, so you've got to consider what size gear you're going to be running as well. Some rules have tyre minimum tyre size rules, which also then equate to a certain ground clearance on the back of the car. So I can't really give you an exact answer for this because it's going to depend on your rules. But in ISRA racing, there is an axle height rule. Now the axle height rule is measured from the bottom of the chassis when the axle is in to the top of the axle. And ISRA state, you have to use a 332 axle. But in your rules, you might be allowed to use two millimeter axles. So again, it's all about the rules that you're gonna to race to and you've got to check them out properly before you start doing this task. Right, so let's assume that your class has a ground clearance rule. Now this gear measures yeah, there we are. I was actually in between two teeth. So 15 to 1. So if you're running a ground clearance rule, then clearly that's normally a total ground clearance under the back of the car, including the gear. So if the gear is sticking below the chassis like that, then the back of the chassis would be even higher than your minimum ground clearance rule and would make your weight all high up and the car wouldn't handle anywhere near as well. So we want to think about what gearing are we going to be using? What tire sizes are we going to be using? What are our rules? What minimum axle height can we actually have on the car? There are so many things to consider before we can make that final decision. A few moments later. So you may have investigated your rules. You may have decided exactly how high you're going to set your back axle up in the car, but how long are you going to make your car? How long are you going to make it from the guide pivot to the center of the back axle? Now you might think, well, why am I considering that? Well, there is actually in a lot of rule sets, there is actually some allowance to make your chassis slightly shorter or slightly longer. Now, if you're using little bushes like this, then that gives you the chance, remember, to slide it around inside those holes and position your axle where you want it. As a general rule of thumb, short cars, tend to change direction better through really tight twisty parts whereas a long car resists, resists change in direction but a long car may generate more grip than a shorter car 
but obviously not change direction so well. So therefore, again, it's personal preference. Maybe you build one with a short wheelbase. Maybe you build one with a long wheelbase. Uh, swap the motors out, swap tyres out. Try the difference. See what happens. Do some experimentation. A few moments later. Now, if that isn't complicated enough, there's also another thing to consider, and that's where you actually put the bushes. So let's assume that I slide that onto my axle there. Now, most people would normally assemble their cars with the bushes on the outside like this. So there we are. So you can see, and I'll hold it up a little bit closer to the camera. So you can see the main part of the bush is assembled on the outside. And you can see how much movement these give to help you align your axle in the correct place. So that's a, that's a conventional way of setting them up and that's how the chassis perhaps is designed to hold them. But again, depending on your rules, you may wish to move your bushes into a, into a different location. Now I have seen some people set them up like this. There we go. So you can see they've set it up. Well, they can, you might want to set it up with your axle bushing here on the side away from where the motor solder's in, or the opposite side to the gear. They've set them up so that the axle bushing is inside the pillar block. So you're saying, well, why would I do that? Well, there is a theory that says if you can, if you think about the center line of your chassis and you're setting your bushes up so that the left and the right bushing are equally spaced from the center line then you get equal flex on the axle at the back you get equal balance on the chassis so potentially it can make your car handle better but then on the other side of things if you're moving that bushing slightly further in it tends not to be supported in the hole anywhere near as well as it would be if it was pushed into the hole also you do end up with more axle flex on each end Okay, it may be slightly more equal with the gear on this side and no gear on that side. Also, that makes your axle potentially weaker and more susceptible to damage. So again, it's a personal preference thing. Try, try it with, try it without, try, you know, inside or outside with your bushing. See how your car handles. What do you prefer? Do you want to take more of a risk or less of a risk? A few moments later. So after you made all your decisions, about the height of your axle, the forward and rear position of your axle, so the length, the wheelbase and effect of your car. You've also then decided whether you're going to put your uh, axle bushes on the outside or the inside of the pillar blocks or in the middle of the pillar blocks. When you made all those decisions, it's now time to get some materials ready to do the job. This is an axle that I would normally use. I don't know whether you can see it in the camera. I quite like Vitula axles. I find them very straight, very true. So if I put one of these into my bush, the bush slides quite nicely on that axle. There isn't too much wobble on the axle, but it does slide very nicely onto that axle. Now, if there's any sort of play, which there is a fraction of a fraction of a, bit, a tiny little bit of play there on that with that bushing on that axle when you're going to, if you're going to use this axle as a jig to set up your bushes this axle wouldn't be so good because it could allow the bushes to move whilst you're soldering so I I've got another axle here which is a slightly larger diameter than the axles I normally use and it's a really tight fit on the bushes so they are really tight in that axle and I have to sort of pull it along a little bit there is a bit of friction there so I know that that hole in that bushing is sitting perfectly on that axle and the bushing is not going to move and misalign so it's always worth going through your box of axles and trying to find the biggest axle that you actually have that fits your bushings as tight as you possibly can and then you can use that axle as your jig axle so when you have your jig axle ready and you've selected that one you're then going to need to perhaps find some jig wheels or some jig blocks basically what they do is they hold your axle at the right height away from the block the flat block to get you wherever you wanted your axle to be so the general rule is that you would probably look at what size gears or tires you're going to be running uh, trim down to your minimum size or use the gear itself now this might be a 41 tooth gehoser so if that gear, as I measured earlier, was I think 
than if you used two gears like this to set up your axle. So you could put your axle through, you could use two gears, one on each end like so, and that way they would, they would hold your axle to be the right height uh, to, so that the gear is in line with the bottom of your chassis. Now that's the way I used to do it for quite a long time and you can be pretty accurate with that method. You've obviously got to make sure that where you sit the gears, you sit them both in the same position, as in they're both sort of sitting on the, and not the tip of a tooth, but between two teeth. So they sit a little bit flatter on the block. If you've got one sitting on the tip of a tooth and one sitting in between teeth, there will be a slight difference in height at each side. So it's a little bit trickier to set up. You might also want to use some little axle collars or again, you can just use the bosses out of some old gears to put on your axle, because what they can do is they can also hold your bushes into the, in the right place uh, whilst you're soldering. But I don't do it that way anymore. I have some of these, some little jig blocks here. Now you can see the sizes are written on them. So these little jig blocks here, very accurately made, with all the different sizes on them. Now these are imperial measurements but they equate to the size, let's say, so the 295 will equate to an three, a 332 axle height of 8.68, which is a diameter of 14.986. Again, I'll put some sizes on the screen so you can see how I come to those figures um, and you can see what all the other values equate to. So you obviously need a pair of jig blocks. I do have a very limited number of these jig blocks that I can sell. Generally only to UK people because they're quite heavy to post. Um, I'll explain the reasons why they're heavy in a minute. So now we're going to prepare for assembly. So I've got a bushing here slid onto my axle. It's nice and tight. So you probably want to clean up your bushes to polish them up a little bit to make sure they're nice and clean, make sure there's no sort of oil residue or anything on them. In order to do that, I've got a little wire brush on the end of my uh, rotary tool. So I'm going to spin that round and I'm just going to polish up the bushing until it's nice and clean around all the edges. And there we go. You can see that's nice and shiny. And I'm going to do the same for the other one. So we're back and we've cleaned up our little bushes made sure there's no oil deposits or debris inside there they're all nice and clean unlike my hands we may also want to just clean out our holes in our chassis and the pillar blocks so again if you've got any burrs inside there just get a knife and scrape around the edge to remove any burrs you might also want to give it a bit of a clean with something like acetone or isopropyl alcohol just to get rid of any oil or grease that might be around the areas where we're about to solder. So I've cleaned up the holes in my chassis in the pillar blocks and I'm going to get one of these tools out. Now this is a really useful tool for doing this task. I've had it for many, many years. I bought it from SCD, say many, many years ago. A little setup block or a jig block with lots of holes drilled in various places to help you build chassis. You can get these from all sorts of places. I've seen plenty of them on the uh, internet for sale for building retro type chassis, but they can be quite handy sometimes for simple jobs. So you'll notice I put a couple of little pins in these two holes and it's got a guide pin. I have seen blocks, however, just to be wary, where this guide pin is not actually central to the other pins. So watch that out, be careful when you're actually uh, looking at the blocks that you've got. Find one that's actually central. So I can drop that on there. You notice I've got some lines drawn on that. Now what this tool is going to allow me to do is to help me align the back axle so that I get the, get the axle in line with the front of the chassis. Um, before I had this tool, I would probably just build it and assemble it by eye and then measure each side. Now, I'm still going to measure each side to get it precise, but at least this gives me 
an idea of where I'm going to start with. So I'm just about to assemble my jig at the back and then we'll get going. So I've assembled my jig blocks at the back with my axle and my bushes in place. Now the good thing about these being heavy, as I mentioned before, uh, they will actually stay in place. They don't move very easily because they are weighted down and they are fairly heavy and sit nicely on this block. So you can almost position them where you want and know that they're not going to move around when you touch the edge with a soldering iron. Because you want to avoid the issue of soldering these bushes to your axle, I always recommend you put a little, little dollop of oil on the axle and then run that into your bushes just to make sure that the solder is not going to stick to the axle and the bushes. And there we go. So now I've got a drop of oil on the edges of my bushes to make sure that any sort of solder and flux is not going to go down into my bushes. Make sure my back axle is lined up. To some extent on the C43 chassis, you can by eye line the axle up with the back of the chassis. Sometimes I've found that the back of the chassis or the edge of the motor box are not quite parallel with the front of the chassis, but it's fairly close and you'll see uh, how that works in a minute when we solder them in and we measure them. Now you can see that I've gone for an axle height of 8.68. So I'm building this for an ISRA spec car. Um, potentially I'm also going to be using it in the BSL championship in the UK as well, which use Falcon motors. But uh, I also want the chassis to be compatible for ISRA as well. So that's why I've chosen that. I'm also assembling my axle, so it is pretty central. So I'm not going short, I'm not going long. I'm going for fairly central, perhaps slightly more towards the rear. ISRA has a limit of 120 millimeters from center of guide pivot to center of back axle. So you need to be make sure you're within that limit. But this brings me well within that. So once I'm happy, the chassis is aligned, back axles aligned, I've got my right jig blocks, I've got the height set right. I'm going to use a small amount of flux on my bushes and on the chassis, and then I'm going to solder them together. Notice I'm using one of these little, little tiny flux brushes. They're really good for applying a very small amount of flux to the right area. So I put a small amount of solder on my soldering iron, make sure everything's held in place. It shouldn't move, but I always just like to make sure I hold it down. And then I apply just a little tack to one side. And I tack it the other side like so. So when I've tacked them in place, the back axle in place, I can carefully remove my jig blocks and I can measure my back axle. Now remember, I'm not measuring from the centre here to the centre of the back axle. So any sizes I get are just literally for reference from side to side on the chassis. So zero my calipers. And I'm going to go from that front corner here to the back of the back axle. Hundred and twenty point zero nine, and this side, oh, spot on, hundred and twenty point one. So I'm very happy with that accuracy that I've achieved. But if I didn't, if it wasn't, if it was slightly out of alignment, then you could always put your jig box back on, and you could heat up one side, and you could slightly move it whilst you're heating, a fraction. Then you can take it apart again, check it out until you get them perfectly aligned. Now, if you're well out and you're having to move your axle quite a lot, then you would also need to reflow the joint on the other side. Otherwise, your axle could be binding up. But we're going to have a look at how we can fix that uh, another way in a minute. So now that I was happy that my axle was in the right place, I'm now going to apply a bit more flux around these bushes and I'm going to go and solder them in all the way around. But whilst I'm doing that, I'm going to try not to heat the bit that I've just soldered because obviously that's holding it in place to start with. Now, when you're doing this, it's good to have a really hot iron and 
you've let the tip soak to get nice and hot to start with so you've got a good heat capacity in the tip so the heat gets transferred onto your bushing straight away. I'm going to carry on and solder that and then I'll be back in a minute. So now I've flowed solder all the way around these axle bushes it's time to take a final measurement and see if everything's okay and if it's not then I'll have to reflow them again. Let's check the length on either side Okay, 120.09 still on that side, and this side. There we go, that side must have moved ever so fractionally as I've been soldering. 120.05, so 0 0.04 of a millimetre out. That's good enough because I don't think the front of the chassis is actually that accurate anyway. So the points I'm measuring between aren't brilliant, but I'm happy with 0 0.04 of a millimetre uh, difference from side to side on my chassis. So let's check the axle height. Let's move it from there. Zero these. So remember axle height in ISRA is measured from the top of the axle to the bottom of the chassis and you have to use a 332 axle. So let's measure that and see what happens. 8.60 on that side. Turn that around. Don't want to squash it too hard. 8.60 on that side. Just double check. Just do the same again. Move it around. Come back. Check that. 8.60. And check that side. There's, bit, oh, there's something on the axle. Make sure the axle's clean, as I say, because otherwise you will get a dodgy reading. There we go. 8.60 on that side. Now you may be wondering, this says axle height of 8.68 on here. Well, when I've been doing my measuring, I've actually put back in the axle I intend to race with. Now this axle, remember, is a slightly smaller diameter than the axle I was using to jig my blocks with in the first place. Probably not quite by that much, but I'm going to get a slightly lower axle height than a true 332nd, large 332nd axle through the bushes. So the next stage, if you're happy with where everything is sitting, I can might as well show you the solder flowed around the inside there. So make sure it has flowed nicely around the whole bushing and there's no gaps or holes. That's just uh, some residue there left from the flux and the end of the soldering iron. So I'm going to clean that up in a minute. So I'm going to give it a bit of a scrub. Now I'm going to scrub it with something called Toro, which is a check cleaning um, material. It's a bit like a white powder uh, that's a bit abrasive. So in the UK we have things like Astonish, and I'm pretty sure there's other sort of white cleaning powders around that would do the same job. So I'm going to give it a bit of a scrub with that, and then I'm going to just give it a quick wash under water, and that's going to clean off all any flux residue etc. I'm also going to clean my axles that I've used and I'm going to clean my jig blocks just in water just to get rid of any flux. I'm also going to clean the block as well because again flux gets into your block and if you leave it to soak in there every time you put a chassis on you'll get flux on your chassis and everything will go rusty. So I'm going to make sure everything's now clean now that I've finished using acid flux. In case I didn't mention it before, the acid flux that I'm using is Lucky Bob's acid flux. I've found that to be pretty good, but to be honest, they're all pretty good. They're all much of a muchness, so it's whatever you, whatever type of acid flux you can get hold of um, will do the job. It's all about having a nice hot soldering iron. Now this one was set to 450 degrees C at the tip, and I'd let it soak in for quite a while to make sure that the heat then gets transferred into the chassis uh, nice and quickly without having to stand there with the iron on the chassis for ages and ages waiting for it to heat the chassis. So I'm back now with everything cleaned and you can see that the black residue around where I've soldered is now all gone. I've scrubbed it all clean. Now there's one thing I meant to mention with this block here. Um, if you don't have one of these blocks it's not a problem because you can quite easily get a piece of graph paper and you could put your chassis on a piece of graph paper. You could line up the front and then you could line up the back axle. 
So graph paper is a possibility if you don't have one of these blocks. Also, some people have these blocks and some of these holes at the back here are used to help align your axle with your guide tab at the front. So if this car or chassis was in place there, some blocks have little holes here so that you could put your little pins in and you can align your back axle and get it right. But this block here was probably made for 30 second cars because it was made many years ago uh, where people didn't race so much 24th in the UK. And this one hasn't got holes that are spaced appropriately to help me line the back axle up. So there's now one last thing we need to do. We can take our axle, we can run it through our bushes um, we can check that it spins quite nicely. This one does spin quite freely. But one thing you need to check is when, if you put your axle through one of the bushes, you can see that I can, I don't know where you can see that on the camera, there we are, I can rotate it like that. If I hold that still, you can see that it actually wobbles in one bushing. Now this is the slightly smaller axle that I'm going to be racing with. So one thing you can do is you can move it forwards and backwards, I don't know whether you can see, you're looking down here on this pillar block that's furthest away. You can see I'm moving it backwards and forwards and you can see it moves or it wobbles about the same above and below the hole in the bushing. And if I do the same there and move it forward and backwards, you can see again, it moves about forwards and backwards the same, which means it lines up quite well with this bushing. So that this one here I know is running pretty true in compared to the hole in that bushing. Do the same this way, so I bring it around here, so I slide the axle out there. So again, I'm looking for it being able to move above and below the bushing by about the same amount. So let's try and hold that in a better position. Oh, you can see actually, I mean, they are aligned very well because the axle just slides right through. So I'm going to go above and below like that, and then I'm going to try it front to back compare that with how it lines up with the hole so you can see yeah sometimes if your bushings aren't in line your axle could be well out of line by the time it comes to here and you can see yeah maybe it moved much further back than it moves forwards and you have to sort of almost like bend the axle to get it through your bushes but another way to tell how well they are aligned is just to take your axle and it should as I say, it doesn't do it now. Oh, it should just drop through your bushes. And if it doesn't drop through, then it's not moving well enough. They're not aligned well enough. Let's just line it up the other side. Drop straight through like that. So I know that these bushes are very well lined up. There we go. You can see it just dropped straight through. So I'm happy with that job. So thank you very much for watching another Cleave Tech video. So hopefully you haven't switched off yet or changed to another video. So the quick last tip is, well, remember what I said about them lining up like this and forward to back, etc., and making sure your axle moves smoothly through? That is something you need to check after every single race that you do because one knock at the back corner, one big off, one wall shot can misalign these bushes. And if your axle doesn't move freely in the bushes, you are sacrificing a lot of power on your car to overcome this friction that you'd get with your axle in the bushes. So always check that when you're dismantling your car at the end of an, end of an event or after a big long race. Make sure that the axle does still move freely. And if it doesn't, then you can perhaps take an, an older axle because you don't want to damage maybe a race axle, but take an older axle and then you can always put it through your bushing. You can hold it in your hand and you can bend it slightly like that and that will bend the pillar block Again, you can do it this way and bend it like that. So you're pushing down on this bit of the axle, pulling up on that bit of the axle. That will help you bend your pillar blocks and help you align your bushes. Again, if they're well out, then you may want to consider resoldering them. But as it's a new chassis, I knew my pillar blocks were vertical in the first place. I have aligned them when I've soldered them. So I shouldn't need to resolder them. It's just more of a case of just bending and tweaking the chassis slightly where they pass through to help you keep your axle in good alignment. So, thank you for watching. Thanks for staying with us for that extra little tip. So if you haven't already, please subscribe.
that is hit the button down below this video or hit the big cleave tech icon at the end of this video you'll see it appearing on the screen very soon um, thanks for watching and there's more to come because we're not finished yet see you again next week bye